Hello again everybody and welcome to the Karg Island Raid 1985 scenario in command. This is set during the Iran-Iraq war in the 1980s with me playing on the Iraqi side in this scenario when I had the map zoomed out just so we can get some context as far as where this is and what we're up against. I had originally planned on doing a Strait of Hormuz a center scenario that's still coming. It's about a 48 hour scenario called Operation Brass Drum that I'm about to go through. But I was asked in a comment somewhere, I was trying to find it earlier but I can't even find the original comment, how I would deal with this scenario and how I would put this particular airstrike together. So that's what I'm going to do first. So you can see it's in the Persian Gulf area with Iran over here to the east, Iraq to the west with Kuwait just sort of stuck there in the middle and I'm going to play this as if Kuwait just doesn't exist and overfly them at will as the Iraqis. And by this time, I guess we're in 1985 in the Iran-Iraq war, the ground battles had just become a stalemate, war of attrition, and the Iraqis started to focus on hitting the Iranian economy and forcing them out of the war in that way. And this scenario is a good example of the type of raid that would be carried out. So let me go ahead and zoom the map in to the area we're looking at and we'll go over the side briefing and have a look at our forces and the Iranian forces we're up against. So the situation is that following a successful defense of Basra earlier in the year, command wishes to strike Iranian economic targets. The Karg Island facilities are within reach and their destruction would further disrupt Tehran's ability to purchase arms. Now the enemy forces are going to consist of significant air defenses at Karg Island itself. We have airfields at Omidea up here to the north, we have Shiraz down here to the east, and then an airfield down here at Bandari Bashir on the Persian Gulf coast itself. So we're going to have air defenses consisting of F-5s, F-4Ds, and F-4E fighters with Hawk, SA-6, and Rapier surface-to-air missile sites and significant AAA and aircraft artillery in places protecting the facility and also naval forces may be operating in the region. Now on our side, we're going to be operating out of Talil Air Base over here in Iraq. We're going to have six MiG-23 floggers in the air-to-air -air role, nine Sukhoi 22 fitters. These are going to be my air-to-ground aircraft hitting the targets themselves. And then an additional three Mirage F-1s also in the air-to-air -air role with my mission to strike and significantly damage the Karg Island oil facilities with minimal losses to my own forces. And then for execution, carry out the strikes with our fitter aircraft and floggers as escorts within five hours. Use AS-9 Kyle armed aircraft, and these are anti-radiation missiles, to suppress enemy missile defense sites protecting the target. Now unfortunately with the AS-9s, and I had a look at the setup of the scenario with our own aircraft, we don't have any aircraft that are set up with AS-9s, nor can we rearm aircraft to carry these, so I'm not sure exactly how I'm supposed to do that. I think maybe the scenario design changed at some point. Maybe the briefing just didn't get updated, but in either case, that's the mission. That's what I'm up against, and that's what I have in order to make this happen. So let's go ahead and get into the mission, and I'll unpause it. I have five hours to make this happen here, and then I also have a radar station, a Barlock early warning radar that I have, and I'll get rid of the overlay there that I have set up, and I believe this one is radiating already. Yeah, my radar is active, so we have that providing us with early warning, and that is it. So it's just going to be a matter of getting my own fighters up there and sniffing out with their radars, basically anything that is uh, beyond, say, you know, this line. That's going to be against a fighter aircraft, probably about the effective range of this early warning radar system. And that's not going to do a whole heck of a lot for me. Okay, so let's go ahead and get in here and start to get into the nuts and bolts of this. Now, I'm just going to leave it running in real time as I do this. Uh, like I said, I have five hours, but I am going to get this going pretty much immediately. I could wait until the end of the window here and try to time it, you know, for example, so that any aircraft that are airborne already have to RTB for fuel and play it that way. But yeah, I'm just going to get this going immediately. Now, looking at the aircraft that we have available, and I'll continue to run it here in real time, we have Sukhoi 22 fitters. These are going to be my air to ground aircraft with. A loadout of just general purpose bombs. I have nine of them available and they all have the same loadout of five FAB 500 general purpose bombs, an ECM pod, and two 820 liter drop tanks. Now, let me go ahead and note right here that the bombs, they have 201 kilograms of high explosive filler. That means they're going to do 201 damage points against these installations. So I'm going to keep that number in the back of my head when it comes to deciding how to allocate these aircraft with five bombs capable of doing that much damage. 
Okay, so on the air-to-air -air side, we have MiG-23s, and I have six available loaded with the same loadout, two AA-7 Apex missiles. These are semi-active radar-guided missiles that, well, aren't too bad, I guess. Uh, base probability of hit of 70%, and considering that I'm up against F-4s and F-5s, I'm probably going to have the F-4s at least carrying AIM-7 Sparrow missiles, so it's going to be sort of a semi-active medium range radar guided missile against semi active medium range radar guided missiles i would expect the 80s era sparrows however to have an advantage when it comes to the beyond visual range phase until i can start getting in close and using these aa8 aphid ir guided short range missiles base probability of hit 80 percent but i have to keep in mind that these are as we can see down here rear aspect only missiles so in this case i have to get my aircraft behind the enemy aircraft in order for these to be effective and again, I have six of those, and then I have three Mirage F-1s available. Again, these have the same loadout on all three aircraft. These have R-550 Magic Missiles, and these are the shorter range IR guided missiles, 75% base probability of hit, and Super 530Fs, which are more semi-active radar guided missiles with 80%. These are actually slightly better than the Apexes when it comes to base probability of hit. I'll probably, in fact, try to lead off with these aircraft, my three Mirages, and if I do get into just a missile versus missile fight, this is going to be my best chance of being effective, and then try to save the MiG-23s for like a close-in, more dogfighting situation once the F-4s and F-5s have, or I guess just the F-4s, most likely in this case, I don't think the F-5s are going to have radar-guided missiles, if I'm remembering my Iranian F-5 models correctly at least. So, in other words, lead off with the Mirages and then follow up with MiG-23s if I can. So, those are my forces. That's what I have to work with here. Now, let's go ahead and have a quick look at the Karg Island oil infrastructure target. And I'll zoom into the island itself and I'll hit V to... Yeah, this is just one group. If I hit V, then we can see the individual targets and it's a combination of... You see, I have... I've already looked at this a little bit. I have two jetties, or in other words, docks one north and one south. I have a refinery in the middle and then just a whole lot of oil tanks. So the way that I'm going to try to make this work is that if I can take out the two jetties and the refinery, I'm going to be extremely happy with this because looking at this just from the point of view of crippling the enemy's economy, it doesn't really do me a whole lot of good to take out oil storage if they still have the capability to move and process so they can have all the oil in the world they want here but if I take out the jetties and keep them from being able to get that on and off the island or if I take out the refinery and keep them from being able to do anything with those oil stores I would rather do that than just take out the storage because that doesn't really do anything other than take out a small percentage of their capability whereas taking out the refinery and the jetties especially the jetties is going to completely put this operation out of commission no matter how much oil they have in storage so it's those three targets that I'm going to focus on and then like I said I'm expecting air defenses basically anywhere around the island itself so I'm going to have to be very very careful when it comes to how I get in and out of there I mean there aren't really that many good avenues of approach no matter what I'm going to come over water which isn't ideal when it comes to avoiding surf air missiles I'm just going to have to take my medicine if I want to get aircraft in and out of there and in the scenario description, it actually says that the air defenses are going to be randomized every time that you play the scenario. So, well, this is my first time playing through it, but if you have played this yourself, you're probably going to see a slightly different setup than what I'm going to be faced with here. Now, I put a lot of thought already into how I would approach this scenario, and what I'm going to do is, since I'm expecting air defenses to be airborne from all three air bases, you know, up here, uh, down here, next to Shiraz, and then Bandari Bushir, what I'm going to try to do is pull these air defenses down to the south out here over the gulf if I can, using my fighters at high altitude to come down here and try to force an aerial engagement down here to the south of the target, because my overall plan is to try to sneak in along the coast, along some ridges out here over Iran itself and then down to the target, try to sneak in those Suko-22s at low level in that direction. And let me come here to the, I'll uh, go to the relief view so we can get a better look at the terrain so i want to use terrain you know whatever terrain i can get that's going to help me out because it's all marshy terrain until we really get into the interior of iran itself and then we get some ridges we can hide behind and then start to take it down i'll probably in fact make it look more like that 
using this little ridge right here just north of the island and then the second island just to the north of the main target area right here to mask the approach as much as I possibly can. There's really no good way to work on and off to this target, but this is what I'm going to try to do. And then additionally, I'm going to try to stack these fighters sort of high-low and try to have the Mirages out in front radiating on their radar and just making a big show of their presence and then try to get some beyond visual range shots off and then below them I'm going to have the MiG-23s come in to try to sneak in possibly behind the enemy fighters close in and try to get some easy shots in that way okay so well that's the plan let me go ahead and get this started we're yeah we're still running in real time it's 0616 local so right now it is yeah it's a full daylight out here over the target area I think it's still yeah, it's full daylight up here as well. So, okay, well, let's go ahead and get this going. I'm going to come in, and instead of building missions for my air-to-air -air aircraft, I'm going to just launch these in groups of three. I think that's how the mission designer had this set up. So I'm just going to launch these first Mirages as a group. And then my second group is going to be MiG-23s, third group, another group of MiG-23s. And, yeah, they'll be airborne in a couple of minutes. And then my Suko 22s, I am going to build a mission for these guys. So let me go ahead and come down here to the Kark Island oil infrastructure target. I'll go Control F11 to build a mission. I'll just call this Kark Strike. It's going to be a strike. I'll go with Land Strike. And then for the mission, well, just so that I don't get, I want to wait about 10 minutes to get my strike aircraft airborne after my air to air fighters are in the air. So I'm going to set this mission to inactive and then manually activate it a little later. And then, like I said, I'm not going to hit the tanks unless I just, in real time, happen to have some bombs left over. So I'm just going to have the two jetties and the refinery as my pre-planned targets. Now, I was mentioning weaponeering this so that I get the maximum effect, and if I go, if I hit V again, and there's one of my aircraft getting airborne, it's probably, yeah, definitely the Mirages, and I'll just take the jetty, for example, I noted earlier that the bombs I'm taking up have 200 hit points, or just that arbitrary, you know, 201 kilograms of explosive filler translates into 201 hit points. And if I look at this structure, damage points, that's what I was looking for, 1,200. So it's going to take at least six hits on this structure to make it go down. And I have nine aircraft available, and if I go to the refinery, also, 1,200 damage points, so 9 aircraft with 5 bombs total, 200 points per bomb. It's going to take, well, at least 6 of those aircraft getting direct hits on all these targets to take out all of them. And with 9 of them, I mean, taking air defenses into account, I don't expect by any means for half of my force to survive this. I'm going to try to do the best I can to get everything on and off, but especially in here around these targets without any suppression of enemy air defenses, I only expect maybe four aircraft to get in here on these targets, and I'm just going to have to take whatever damage on these three targets that I get, but it would take to take out all of these six aircraft having perfect runs, and these are mid-80s, unguided bombs with mid-80s aircraft systems, and I, I don't expect to take out all three of these targets, in other words. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this set up. Flight size, I'll just set this to cells of three aircraft. I'm going to assign all of my available Suko 22s to the mission. And then I'm going to come in here to the mission doctrine and just make sure everything is as I want it right here. I'll have to also do this, do this for the aircraft that just got airborne. Okay, fuel state, I'm going to disable the automatic RTB. I don't want these guys to hit an arbitrary fuel state and RTB. I know that they can make it there and back, but I don't want the automatic system to do anything that I don't want it to do. And then weapon state, I'm just going to have them disengage an RTB once they have expended their bombs. And I am not going to allow them to stick around and strafe. Where that, where that, yeah, there we go. Air to ground strafing. Uh, no, I'm not going to allow that. This is bombs only. Just get on and off the target and then get out. Automatic evasion is set to yes. I'll leave that there for now. And ignore plot of course when attacking is set to no. So if I do give them a manual course, they are going to follow it. Okay, MCON, this is important. I'm going to have them passive all the way in so they're not giving their aircraft position away electronically. Okay, so that one is set up. Okay, now what I'm going to do is select these MiGs. I didn't mean for them to go active. Let me have them go radar off. Okay, that first group is radar off. We get the second group 
radar off. Okay, then the MiGs, like I said, I'm going to have them follow the Mirages in at low level. So if I select my Mirages, I'm going to hit F3. And I'm just going to give them a course that's going to take them out here over the Gulf. Okay, so I've got my Mirages heading out there at 36,000 feet. I'm going to take my first group of MiGs and just have them follow them out. But I'm going to hit F2. I'm going to have these MiGs start out. I'll just have them go at low altitude. 2,000 feet and I'm just going to make sure they're uh, just at a cruise throttle not full yeah same thing on these yeah 480 knots that's cruise as far as the throttle setting and I've got my second MiG-23 group up I'm just going to have them I'll have them actually come just a little bit to the north and I'll hit F2 have them go down to low altitude as well and I will also double check yeah, group 181 definitely is radar off. Let me just double check this one. Okay, group 180 is radar off as well. Okay. So that is progressing, and with any luck, these mirages are going to start to draw the enemy air defenses down here to the south. Now that means that I need to go ahead and get my strike mission going. It's going to take them a couple of minutes to taxi and for everybody to get airborne, but I'm just going to switch this one to active. And that's going to get all nine Suko 22s going and into the air. It's going to automatically throw down a path for them. And then I just need to edit that path to have them go on that, that uh, sort of a low level north and then south on the target route that I have planned. 